Hello everyone, my name is Adam Box. Welcome back to another Open Broadcaster Software Multi-Platform or OBS Studio tutorial. This is going to be an at a glance video, which means I'm going to show you start to finish how to set up a recording system within OBS Multi-Platform and get started recording in a matter of a few minutes. However, keep in mind that that means I can't go in depth on all the topics. I've already covered pretty much everything regarding this software in very deep detail in a long series of videos. You can find the full link to that in the description below. It's a full playlist of a lot of videos. So to get started, download and install OBS Multiplatform. That's the one here on the right from obsproject.com. Again, link will be in the description below. And download the one for your system. If you're running Windows, download Windows. If you're running Mac, download Mac, etc. Once you have it installed, it's going to look like this. I've reset mine back to how it starts when you have it installed so you can have a look at what it looks like. We're going to set up some recording software or some recording settings. So this is going to be for game recording, desktop recording, PC, console. It, it's all going to work out. So to start out, you're going to want to make a new profile. And I cover why these are important in another video. But go to profile and hit new. And we're going to call this local recording 1080p 60. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to set up a 1080p 60 frame per second recording profile. Click OK. Same thing with scene collection. Local recording 1080p 60. Now the scene collection is your collection of scenes and sources, which are your various video inputs such as your webcam, your desktop, your game, etc. Your profile is going to be your actual settings for like your bit rates and what file type you record to, etc. We want those specifically set up for local recording. Alright, next, let's dive into the settings. Click the settings button down here. And you can change your language and theme. Then go to stream and leave that alone. We're doing a local recording, so we don't want to tell it to stream anywhere. Go to output, and we're going to leave it on simple, but we're going to tell it where to save. Now, I'm going to tell it to save to my hard drive RAID array for recording videos. This is a specialized hard drive setup for recording videos. If you don't have more than one hard drive in your computer, keep in mind you may experience lag or bottlenecks while trying to record, especially if you're on a laptop. This is because your hard drive is bottlenecking or essentially running out of speed to be able to handle everything while recording your video and trying to run your operating system in your games because it requires you know using a lot of its bandwidth to run your operating system in your games already. So trying to have it record a video too is going to make it really slow down. But since we're going to set up a kind of low bitrate recording here, hopefully that shouldn't be too big of a problem. Now where it says recording format, make sure you choose MP4. This is the most widely compatible format for YouTube and your video editor and etc. And it'll enable a audio track feature that we're going to mess with in a few minutes here. And so you just want it to be on MP4. Now your video bitrate. This is going to be somewhat impacted by your hard drives, but for a general usage situation, I put this link in the description below. It's a chart from actually from YouTube help that tells you what bit rates they recommend uploading at for your different resolutions. So if we're doing a 1080p 30 frames per second video, it should be 8 megabytes per second. If it's a 1080p 60 frames per second video, it should be 12. So we're going to set it for 12 so we can do a 60 frame per second recording. So I'm going to do 1, 2, 0, 0, 0. Okay. For audio bitrate, when you're doing a local recording, always do 320. That is the max you can do, and it's the highest possible quality, and there's never an excuse to have lower quality audio. I'm, there's just never an excuse, okay? Just take that to heart. Always 320 on your audio. When you're streaming, that's a different story, but for recording, that's what you need. Click Apply. All right, go down to Audio. This you want to set up to match your various microphone audio setups and you actually have the ability the ability with OBS multi-platform to record multiple audio tracks if you want to do that to mess with more advanced stuff in your editor but this won't work for YouTube so since we're gonna make this more geared towards YouTube we're just gonna do a single audio track with our game audio and our microphone audio and then you can figure out the multi-track audio recording via a video I've already made in the description below in the playlist for your desktop audio device, this is going to be your game sound or whatever sounds your computer is making. By default, default should work just fine. If you know you have it going to a specific device, you can choose it. But since your Windows, your games and stuff play out of the default device in Windows, default should be perfectly fine. Leave that at stereo and leave sample rate at 44.1 kHz or 48. Do not do 22.05. 
Leave desktop audio device two and microphone two and three as disabled, but for microphone audio device one, you need to choose your actual microphone. You'll see here I have a couple different options. I have my webcam, I have my line in, I have another microphone input, and then I have my main audio interface with my good microphone. You wanna choose whichever one you're using. If you're using a USB microphone like a Blue Snowball or Yeti, it'll actually say Blue Snowball or Yeti there. If you're using just a plug-in, you know, 3.5 millimeter headset microphone, it may just say microphone, sound blaster, or real tech, or something like that. So figure that out, and then you'll see the audio levels down here at the bottom when you're talking. And so if you don't see those, you've probably chosen the wrong audio device. Once you've chosen the right one, you can either enable push to mute or push to talk, which means you have to push a key to either talk and make the sound happen or mute it. And then you can set that up in the hotkeys menu here. I'm not going to set it up, so just click apply. If you do want to set that up, go over to hotkeys here, and then you can set up a bunch of different hotkeys. Literally just press the key you want to activate to start or stop streaming, to mute, unmute, etc. I've covered this in depth in a full video, so I'm not going to go too detailed here. Click the video tab. For renderer, you have two different options. For most people, you should be using Direct3D, DirectX, something like that. It may be different for different people. For base resolution, it should be whatever your screen resolution is, and it should detect it fairly automatically, um, or it should just default to 1920 by 1080. To figure that out, in Windows 10, actually, hang on, cancel. In Windows 10, it's harder to get to because you no longer have a basic screen resolution option. Um, in Windows 7 and 8, just right-click click your desktop and go do screen resolution. It'll be right here and it'll tell you what your screen resolution is. For Windows 10, you're gonna have to either right click your desktop, go to your Nvidia control panel, or your AMD control panel, and we'll go from there once my Nvidia control panel pops up here. All right, under change resolution, under display, for your different monitor, or for your monitor, it will tell you. So for like my one running through my capture card that most of my games go to, it says 1080p, 1920 by 1080. It will give you a resolution number, and that is your screen resolution. If this is not a 16 by 9 widescreen resolution, such as 1920 by 1080, 1600 by 900, 1366 by 768, or 1280 by 720, then you're likely running either a 16 by 10 or 4 by 3 aspect ratio monitor, which means it's either square or slightly taller rectangle. And so you're going to end up with black bars in your recording until we do something that I'll show you in a minute. Although you're going to end up with black bars nonetheless, unless you run your games at 1280 by 720. If you want to tell your game in your games menu settings to run at 1280 by 720, then that won't be a problem. So set your base resolution to whatever your screen resolution is. For doing local recording, we're going to leave our scaled resolution as the same resolution as our base resolution. So whatever you put here should be here. If you're live streaming, you can downscale it to 720p and stuff, but for a basic recording, let's leave it at that. If you have trouble with your computer not being able to handle it, you can downscale it to 720p, but for this purpose, we're gonna leave it here. The next thing is our frames per second. You either want 30 or 60. That's really the only two options for game recording and main desktop recording that you want. So if you're recording a 30 frames per second video, you can do that. If you have a powerful enough computer, you will need a powerful computer, you can choose 60. And that's what I'm doing with this profile here. Click apply, click OK. All right, next we need to set up our audio levels. You have a mixer down here, which has your two different audio devices. You have your desktop, which is your game sound and your computer sounds, and you have your microphone. Your microphone is, of course, you talking, and you see my audio levels bouncing around right here. So for most game recording and things like that, you're going to want to turn desktop audio down because you want your game audio pretty quiet. And you're, since you don't have a live playback of your audio, you're gonna have to do some test recordings once we get it set up here to see what's best so that your game sounds not overpowering your microphone. Because nothing, nothing's worse than setting up a video recording and doing the video and then finding out that your game was just overpowering your voice and nobody could hear you and you gotta remake the video. Now I will note here, that if you do multiple audio tracks, as I mentioned earlier, which is covered in a previous video, and you edit them in your video editor, then you can balance your audio separate in video editing later on. However, that's a more in-depth topic that we're not going to cover in this video. All right, lastly, we really just need to set up our scenes and sources to actually start recording video. Your scene is collection, well, your sources are your video inputs. So your capture card for your gameplay, your desktop, your computer game, your webcam, etc. Your scenes are your collection of those. So for example, you could have a scene for just your desktop, a scene for just your webcam, a scene for your desktop with your webcam overlay for face cam, a scene for your capture card and overlay and stuff like that. So we're gonna set that up. 
So we're going to remove this empty scene here, and we're going to hit the plus icon here and make a new one. We'll call this one Desktop. And then go over to your sources, hit plus, and for Desktop Capture, it's actually called Display Capture in this version of OBS. So we're going to hit Display Capture, and we're going to call it Desktop Main. You can call it whatever you want, of course. And then it's going to pop up a menu for you to choose which monitor you're using. I'm going to use my gameplay monitor over here. So that's my 1920 by 1081. Most people will probably only have one, but I have three. Here you tell it whether or not you want it to capture your mouse cursor or not. For certain games or applications, you may not want your cursor showing. For me, I do want my cursor showing for tutorials, so I will leave that on. And then here we have it. Now in this window here, window preview, I'm actually going to, well under sources you have this eyeball icon. You can actually mute your source so that you can't see it. Since it's got, you know, the infinite loop here, I'm going to actually go ahead and mute that. Actually, what I can do, is I'm going to go to Properties, and I'm going to change that to another monitor. Now, this brings up another issue. If you have a source that's bigger than your scene here, for example, if you're setting up a 720p scene, your source is going to be too big. So how do you fix that? Well, you have a couple different controls. When you have this red box around it, which all you got to do is click your video in this preview here, you'll have a red box around it. You can use these arrows to scale it. You can click and drag it, just drag it around here. And then you can right click it, go to order, and that'll move it up and down in your order of your sources. So if it's on top of your webcam, you can move it down below it. If you go to transform, you can actually tell it to fit to screen. So that works out really well. And then if you have a source that is square and you want to stretch it out, for example, Five Nights at Freddy's, I've covered that in a couple videos now, it is a square game. You can go to right click transform and stretch the screen and it'll stretch it to get rid of black bars. But keep in mind, for every, for most games and desktops and stuff, that will look really, really bad because you are stretching it. But you do have the option to do so. And then you also have center to screen, which in most cases will basically, you know, center it up so that it's not just starting in this corner, it's starting, you know, in the center of the screen. But for most cases, you're just going to go to transform, fit to screen. So now we have a desktop. Let's make a webcam one. I'm going to hit plus, add webcam. And then instead, when we add our source, instead of going to display capture, we're going to go to video capture device. This is going to be for your specific video inputs, such as webcams or capture cards. I'm going to call this webcam. Click OK. Name's already in use because I called the scene that, so I'm going to say webcam 1. Click OK. And then it's going to pop up a menu to select my video device. My webcam's at the top here, so I'm going to select it. Now, here, if I just go ahead and click OK, you'll notice, OK, my webcam's a square. That's not going to work. What do? Okay, if I go to transform, stretch to screen, that looks awful. I don't want to do that. So instead, I'm going to go transform, fit to screen, go back to my properties. So right click the source and go to properties. And here we can set some custom options. So if I go to resolution FPS type, I'll go to custom. And then resolution, I'll select 1920 by 1080. And then match output FPS, or if it, you know, since my webcam doesn't support 10, 60 frames per second, it'll just de default to 30. Click OK. Now we have a full non-stretched 1080p video. Okay, let's make a new scene. We'll call this Game Capture. This is where you set up Game Capture for a game. So go into your sources, click Add, and go to Game Capture. We'll just call this Game Capture 1. Click OK. OBS multi-platform works a little bit differently than original OBS in that you can just have it by default with this checkbox automatically capture any full screen application. So as soon as you go full screen in a game, it'll pick it up in most game situations. It'll pick it up and automatically display it on your screen. Now, sometimes you're going to run into compatibility issues. Sometimes it's not going to work. There's a lot of reasons why it might not work. And so if you don't want that, then you can uncheck that and choose a specific game for it to capture. I'm going to leave it on checked for right now. And then for most games, you may or may not want your cursor. I'm going to uncheck that for a minute. Click OK. We don't actually have any games running, so it's going to be blank for now. Next, we're going to add another scene. And it's going to be game capture plus face cam. We're going to add a new source, video capture device. It's going to be our webcam because we're going to add face cam to our game capture. Click OK. Click. Oh, we got to select it under Add Existing, since we already made a webcam, and click OK. Same thing with game capture. Plus, game capture, game capture 1. OK. We're going to move, right-click, go to Order, and move down so that it's below my webcam. And then we're going to use the little box here and make my webcam a little face cam in the corner here. Now we have face cam set up. 
that's all you need. And then let's add a capture card. So I'm going to call this my Live Gamer Extreme Ad Source Video Capture Device LGX. And then under Video Device, I'm going to choose my AverMedia Live Gamer Extreme instead. Uh, all right. Sometimes with some of your capture cards, because like right now this is showing my other monitor, even though it says out of range. So then what I do, because it has device default, I'm going to go to custom resolution, tell it what's displaying 1080p, and boom, there we go. Now it works. Click OK. Now we have our capture card here with my other OBS stream. And then same thing if we want to do face cam, go to video capture device, choose webcam one, shrink it up. And put it over there. And we have face cam with my capture card. It's that simple, really. And then you have a basic recording profile to start recording high quality 1080p 60 frames per second or whatever you want to record videos. All you got to do is hit start recording. And then when you're done recording, hit stop recording. And it's as simple as that. And then your video file that you created goes wherever you selected an output. So for me, it's under I slash OBS. Wherever you choose here, that's where your final video will be. You can upload that to YouTube. Just go to YouTube and click upload and you can upload it or you can upload it to Twitch or, or you, well not Twitch but you can upload it to Facebook or what have you and that's all you need to do. I do hope this video was helpful for you. If it was be sure to smash that like button, smash that subscribe button for more awesome videos. Come check out our Twitch channel and if you're looking for any other information about OBS multi-platform we have made a bunch of other tutorials. Link to that playlist and all sorts of helpful links will be in the description below. This video is brought to you by TunnelBear. TunnelBear is an extremely fast and cheap, or even free, way to protect and hide your data and IP address from unwanted spying. By hiding it behind a bear. TunnelBear also zaps away tracking cookies and allows you to tunnel through other countries to avoid censorship. It's fast, affordable, and even has a free option. Click the link in the description below to try it out for free today. This video is also brought to you by our contributors to our Patreon campaign. Our patrons contribute to our work via a small monthly contribution to help us build bigger and better projects, content, and collaborations, and they receive early access to our videos across all of our channels. Check the description or YouTube card now to check it out. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Adam Reaples Vox. I'll catch you in the next video. You've just watched another epic tech video from me, Epos Vox. Consider crushing that like button and subscribing to the channel. That way you never miss an upload. Also, check the links in the description to follow me on Twitter and Facebook and hit up our Patreon campaign for early access to videos. See you in the next Epic Tech video.